ان الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصلوات الله وسلامه عليه indeed all praises for allah we praise him we seek his help and we seek his forgiveness and we seek refuge in allah from the evil of our own souls and from the evil of our own actions whomsoever allah guides no one can misguide and whomsoever allah leaves to go astray then no one can guide and i bear witness that there's no one worthy of worship except for allah alone without any partners and i bear witness that muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is his slave and his messenger يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون او you have believed fear allah as he should be feared and do not die except as muslims يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا او من كان بي ديوتيفو تو يور لورد who created you from a single person and from him he created his wife and from them both he created many men and many women and fear allah through whom you demand your mutual rights and do not cut off the ties of kinship surely allah is ever and all watcher over you ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu allah wa qulu qawlan sadida yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum وَمَن يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا Oh you who have believed fear Allah and be dutiful to him and always speak the truth and he will forgive you your sins and he will guide you towards righteous actions and whomsoever obeys Allah and obeys his messenger has certainly achieved a great achievement أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار to proceed the best of speech is the book of allah and the best of guidance is the guidance of muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and the worst of matters of those newly invented matters in the religion of al-Islam every newly invented matter is an innovation every innovation is a misguidance and every misguidance is in the fire of hell brothers and sisters the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam he said in a hadith which is found in ibn majah that the likeliness of this dunya in comparison to the akhirah is that of any one of you dipping his finger into the sea let him see what he brings forth if we were to dip our fingers into the sea then in reality how much water would we bring forth how much water would we pull out it is almost nothing compared to the vast ocean in the same way the temporary experience of this worldly life is practically nothing in comparison to the hereafter the reality of this dunya is like a few drops of water that a person has on his finger and once a person dips his finger into the sea and pulls that finger out just as those few drops of water trickle away so too is the dunya running away from us and if we were to gather our hands together and try and try and scoop up some water in the palms of our hands no matter how tight we held our fingers together the water would still trickle away it would run away similarly no matter how much we try and hold on to this dunya and everything that this dunya contains it will continue to slip away from us my brothers and sisters some of us inshallah all of us are trying to hold on to ramadan yet ramadan 
is slipping away. Some of us are trying our best to hold on to whatever we have left of this blessed month of Ramadan. Yet it continues to slip away. And then there are others who actively push it away. For the one who holds on to this blessed month of Ramadan, let us remind ourselves of the statement of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, مَنْ سَامَ رَمَدَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَا مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ That whoever fasts in the month of Ramadan with iman, with faith, and a hope in the reward, his previous sins will be forgiven. However, if a person is fasting without the condition of iman, without hoping for a reward in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, rather, when he's fasting, he's counting down the hours because he feels it is a burden. In reality, he doesn't want to fast. His day goes by watching movies and their favorite TV series. This person does anything and everything to pass time so he can see out the day. Therefore, such a person, we remind ourselves of the Statement of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam That one may fast Yet he gets nothing From his fast except for hunger and thirst So the question is Which type of person are you my brothers and my sisters? Have you made the most of this month of Ramadan? Or has this been a wasted Ramadan? The righteous one The righteous believer after he breaks his fast and he's finished his prayer, after he's eaten, he starts to prepare himself for the Qiyam al-Layl, the Tarawih prayer, the night prayer. And he looks forward to it. He looks forward to standing with the believers, praying to their Lord, because he knows of the baggage that he carries. He knows that I have a lot of sins, a lot of sins. And a way in which I can offload that baggage from my shoulders is by standing with the believers in the Taraweeh prayer, by bowing in ruku, by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him when he is in sajda. So such a person is eager to prepare for the Taraweeh prayer. And in his preparation, he knows what lies ahead. He prepares himself by wearing nice clothes. He irons his clothes. He leaves his house wearing some nice fragrance. Because he knows of the worship that's ahead of him. And for such a person, he knows the statement of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Man qama ramadana imanan wa ihtisaban. غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَا مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ That whoever stands in the nights of Ramadan for the Taraweeh prayer, for the Qiyam al-Layl, out of Iman, and they hope in the reward, his previous sins will be forgiven. However, if a person's heart was not attached to the night prayer, and in fact when the time came to leave his house, he delayed as much as possible to the point he may not even have prayed. And even if he attends, his mind is elsewhere. He hears the words of Ar-Rahman, yet little do the words of Ar-Rahman penetrate his heart. This person, when he stands to pray, all he does is count down the number of rakahs left because he finds it a burden. He doesn't really want to be there. When the time for the witter comes, he's excited. Finally, yes, I've come to an end. And he wants, to, he wants the imam to rush that witter prayer so he can hurry home and hurry away from ibadah. So we remind ourselves of the statement of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that one might pray at night, but he gets nothing from his prayer except for fatigue. Tiredness. So we ask, which type of person are you, my brothers and sisters? Have you made the most of this month of Ramadan? 
Or is this a wasted Ramadan? Brothers and sisters, understand that we will reap in the hereafter what we sow today in the dunya. Indeed, many of us take our life for granted. We think and we feel as if we're going to live forever. The proof of that is in our actions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Indeed, the death from which you flee, indeed, it will meet you. And then you will be returned to the knower of the unseen and the witnessed. And he will inform you about that which you used to do. The day when we stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Lord, will be questioned about everything. Every action, every word that we uttered, every deed. We will, be, will we be happy on that day or will we be regretful? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions, Kalla إِذَا دُكَّتِ الْأَرْضُ دَكَّا دَكَّا وَجَاءَ رَبُّكَ وَالْمَلَكُ الصَّفَّا صَفَّا No, when the earth has been leveled, pounded and crushed, and your Lord has come with the angels rank upon rank. وَجِيءَ يَوْمَئِذٍ بِجَهَنَّمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانُ وَأَنَّ لَهُ الذِّكْرَى And brought forth within view. That day is Jahannam, the hellfire. And that day, man will remember. But what good to him will it be, the remembrance? يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي قَدَّمَتُ لِحَيَاتِي He will say, oh, I wish, oh, I wish I had sent forth, sent ahead some good for my life. Which life? The afterlife. From the good that a person wishes he had sent forth into the hereafter from this dunya is first and foremost to uphold Tawheed and then to be upon the Sunnah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam praying five times a day, every day in Ramadan, outside of Ramadan and then to fast in Ramadan with ikhlas and a person will kick himself that day because Ramadan came and it may be he never fasted. And if he did, he wasn't paying attention to his fast. So he never attained the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He saw no change in himself. Indeed, he saw no change in his heart. The heart, my brothers and sisters, it is the heart that matters. As is mentioned in the hadith recorded in Sahih Muslim, the companion Abu Huraira radiallahu an, he said that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Verily, Allah, he does not look at your appearance, nor does he look at your wealth. وَلَكِنْ يَنْذُرُوا إِلَيْ قُلُوبِكُمْ وَأَعْمَالِكُمْ But rather he looks at your hearts and your actions. When the heart is good, then know that the limbs will do the actions of that which is good. And in Ramadan, one of the aims of the Muslim is to try and reform our hearts. And if we do that, then we will inshallah attain piety, attain righteousness. And if we attain righteousness in our hearts, then our actions will therefore become righteous too. And the one who attains righteousness on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, it will be said to him, O reassured soul, irji'i ila rabbika radiyatam maradiya. Return to your Lord, well pleased and pleasing to him. Fadkhuli fi ibadi wa dkhuli jannati. And enter amongst my righteous servants. And enter into my paradise. Ma'aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, was salatu, was salamu ala rasulillah, wala alihi, wa sahbihi, wa man wala. My brothers and my sisters, 
I advise each and every one of you to take heed from not wasting the month of Ramadan and do not treat worship in this month, especially in the month of Ramadan, like it is a list of chores that you tick box after box. It is not the quantity that matters in this month, rather it is the quality that matters. And pay attention to that which we learn from the methods and the techniques in Ramadan to benefit ourselves, such as the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he taught us that if a man comes to you to fight and to argue with you, that you say to him a simple response, I am fasting, I am fasting. Just in this small, short, concise advice, we learn so much. We learn to remove ourselves from that which is evil and the places of evil. We learn that to be, we should be cautious and not to be around people who are doing evil. For example, if we're amongst a people or a person who's backbiting, that we remind ourselves, I am fasting. And we remind that person, you are fasting. And if they do, if they do not cease, then we remove ourselves from their company. We remove ourselves from evil. Likewise, if we adopt this mentality of removing ourselves from evil and the places of evil outside of Ramadan, then imagine how much we will benefit ourselves. And lastly, I want to remind you that if this Ramadan has been a waste so far, if we've wasted Ramadan, then no, there's still some time left. The whistle hasn't been blown yet. Actually, on that note, how many football teams have been losing badly in the first half of the game, yet when it comes to the second half, they win? How many teams have been losing so badly that they turn it around in extra time? So, the advice is to step up, my brothers and sisters, because now is the time to perform. Now is the time to be motivated, to be inspired. So let this Ramadan be a fruitful one. A Ramadan where you see development in your own self, where you see growth. And do not let it be a wasted Ramadan. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik. أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك